first feature I want to show you from AutoCAD Civil 3D 2018 is the ability to create offset profiles. So if I just create some offset alignments you'll notice there's a new option here to create also offset profiles. I can specify the cross slope I want from the center line of the alignment and on the profile view above you can see the yellow line indicating the offset profile that has also been created. Graphically on the screen I can just add some transitions into my offset alignment um, so we're creating effectively a parking bay arrangement on the offset alignment and you'll notice that in the profile view above there's a separation between the two sides of the road, the yellow lines indicating the profiles. If, as I drag the parking bay out you'll notice that separation increases showing the, that it's maintaining the crossfall uh, through that parking bay. In the offset profile properties we have these offset parameters where we can specify cross slope regions. So on the screen I can interactively pick positions along the offset alignment where I want to change the crossfall. So I can select the changes that I want to apply these on. And so instead of using super elevation to control cross slopes um, and having to create a temporary corridor, I can now just create these offset profiles and specify where I want changes in the crossfall to apply. You'll notice that if I slide any of these positions around on the screen, they update automatically in the profile view. It all just stays connected and also even if I move the alignment again all the offset profiles stay connected to the centerline alignments and the centerline profile. The next feature I'm going to show you are connected alignments. This is very similar to the offset profiles. I can pick two separate alignments and add a connecting alignment with a profile to them. In this case we're specifying a curve radius and a connection overlap and you'll notice also we can control the parabola that's added to the profile. So it's drawn my connecting alignment, uh, it's linking those to the two alignments I chose and I can interactively move it on the screen, type in a new radius and you can see that it all just updates. If I create a profile view of that connected alignment you'll see it's also created the profile for you and it's added in my parabolic curve that I specified. Again if I just move this around you can see it updates interactively, everything stays connected together. We can even modify the profile of one of the uh, alignments that we chose and again the connected alignment and profile just update automatically. So using our offset profiles and our connected alignments I've created a junction arrangement here on this uh, design. I've got a main road running through with offset alignments and profiles on it and I'm just going to use those offset alignments to add a new assembly to the corridor. So we're just going to add a curb and footpath to the main road here. So I'm using the offset alignments of profiles that I've already created and of course the advantage of building the corridor up in this way is that the assemblies I'm using are now perpendicular to the offset profiles not to the baseline center line. We'll just go ahead and add the other side of the road. Um, this gives us much more control when we're creating our corridors. We can actually build the corridor up component by component um, in a very similar way to the way that we can do that now in InfraWorks. And of course each of these baselines uh, react independently so I can change the region starts and ends independently of the, the main centerline. 
Now I've got the back of footpaths on each side, I'm going to extract feature lines from those. So this was a feature that was uh, already in Civil 3D 2017. I can extract feature lines from the corridor. I don't need all of them, so I'm just going to turn some of them off. Um, and I've got a feature line now either side at the back of the footpath. And you can see as I pick these and just hover on them, it tells me the names of those feature lines. Now I'm going to add some earthworks to the corridor. So I'm going to add back into the corridor a feature line created from the corridor. So this is new in Civil 3D 2018. We can now use feature lines from the same corridor as baselines in the same corridor without creating circular references. So I can use that to interactively build up my corridor model. Now that's all well and good, but of course when I do the other side of the road here it becomes apparent that these regions are going to go right across my junction area. So as I, as I add the earthworks in onto the other side here, um, the problem is going to be where the junction exists I need to chop out a portion of that corridor model. So again this is something that's new in Civil 3D 2018. We can now remove uh, a portion of our region without uh, getting lines running across the the gap, if you like, that, that we would have had in previous versions of Civil 3D. So if I split those earthworks and footpath regions, so I've got a, th a center region, if you like, where the, the junction area is. And I can now go back into the corridor properties. And for each of those baselines, I could just take out that center region without any bad effects in the corridor. Uh, if I had tried to do this in previous versions, I would have ended up having to keep that region, but using a null assembly effectively to, to keep it all joined up. So the ability to add uh, feature lines from the same corridor back into the corridor is actually really powerful and one that's going to be uh, very useful to anybody that needs to build complicated corridors. Continuing with our corridors, I'm going to add a turning circle into this corridor here. So I'm just going to use polylines uh, to do this. And I'm just going to extend out the road lanes on this uh, side road so that they meet these two polyline arcs that I've created either side. So you can see now that the, the road lanes will extend out to meet my edge of my turning circle. Of course, now I've got those road edges, they have feature lines on them, so I can extract those just as we did in the previous example. You can extract the feature lines from the corridor and we can then use them, adding them back into the corridor. I'm just going to turn off the ones I don't want, um, just leaving me with the, the two either side. And then we can use those to add a footpath and curb um, to the corridor. So, as you can probably anticipate, um, if I then add a curb and footpath to these feature lines it's going to create a a bit of a mess because the turning circle of course is not tangential um, to the the main direction of the road so in the corridor I'm just going to pick my my region start and end I'm just going to run it straight down there choose my curb and footpath 
and we'll just pick now the road change the frequency so that it uh, looks a little, little bit neater and as you can see um, there's a problem here where the turning circle starts and also where it ends we've got these bow ties so this is a common problem that we have with Civil 3D when we have strange road arrangements uh, such as this one but we now have a feature to help us remove bow ties with some corridors when you rebuild it they may get rid of the bow ties automatically so you see the first one has been sorted out automatically but on the other side here the bow tie remains it hasn't been able to resolve it so when I pick the corridor I have an option to correct the bow ties I simply pick the feature going in to the bow tie and the, the feature coming coming out the other side so we just pick those and then all I need to do once I've selected those two features is pick the intersection point of where the bow tie is you'll see the graphic sort of shows me the area I'm fixing and as soon as I pick that and apply it it basically resolves the overlap and I've got a nice neat corridor without any bow ties One of my favourite new features are these feature lines which remain dynamic to a surface. I've got a car park design here which is based on a grading object. If I look at the one of the feature lines on the parking bay here and just look at that in the elevation editor. So we can see that we now have a new setting relative to surface. I've already set these to be relative to the car park temp surface and they're all at zero relative elevation which means they remain linked to the car park temporary surface. The car park temporary surface is built from a grading object and the grading object is controlled by a single feature line that runs down the center of the car park here. The parking bay feature lines indicated here are relative to that temporary surface created from the ra grading object um, and they have a raised curb uh, on them so that that will stay dynamic to the surface and you can see those in the profiles on the right hand side. So if I was to just take a look at that main feature line that runs down the center of the car park you can see the center point is set relative to the existing ground surface at zero and I have the gradient forward and back properties which I can amend to change the grade across the length of the car park so you can see as I change these grades they just update in the profile view so all of those dynamic feature lines just update as the temporary surface changes. I can also use my grading object to control the crossfall on the car park. So if I amend the grading object itself we'll just change the grading so I can apply a, a different setting to this portion of the grading object here and if you watch the profile views as I change that grade you'll see that the crossfall now on the car park just updates and we can do the same to the other side and what we'll do is create a, a valley down the center of the car park for drainage purposes so if I move the lower portion up you can see I've now created this valley arrangement and of course all of the feature lines that have gone into creating that car park have just updated automatically. So finally let's just take a look at some of the drawing production enhancements in Civil 3D 2018. So I've got my completed corridor and I'm going to create some drawing sheets uh, along the corridor. I now have a new option to create plans only so I'm going to use 
plans only and a new template I've created plan and plan this gives me two plan views one above the other just to complete uh, the settings for our match lines and we'll generate the view frames so what will happen now is with my new template these view frames will appear top and bottom on the same drawing sheet just pick our north arrow settings add this to a sheet set and then we can generate the sheets so once the sheets are actually generated just takes a few seconds we can now open up the sheet set manager and when I double click on one of these sheets you'll see we have our new template and we've got these plan views top and bottom in the same sheet so this is new we weren't able to do this before but obviously if you just want to create plan views of your road designs and you don't need profile views then this is great in terms of drawing production enabling you to put everything on one sheet there have also been some improvements to the way that uh, cross-section views are created I've already got some sample lines in this drawing and I'm going to generate some multiple section views in the sheet grouping options you'll notice the new setting add drafting buffer size between views so this new feature allows us to specify an area around a cross-section view which will basically stay connected to the view and anything we put in that area will move with the cross-section view so I've generated my cross-section views and you can see the red box that's the drawing buffer and so any other information I might want to add to my cross-section um, symbols annotation notes we can just add these within the buffer area and then if I need to update my cross sections layout for any reason those annotations won't be lost or left adrift they will simply move with the cross section view um, and it all just stays connected so this saves us obviously a lot of time when we're adding manual AutoCAD annotation um, in our drawing notice in this example I've put a piece of text that's outside the buffer that does not move with the view all I have to do is move that piece of text back into the buffer area and when I move the section view it now behaves along with the rest of the the annotation so we may need to obviously update our group layout um, automatically so even if I tell it to automatically update the group layout the annotation again within the buffer stays connected just here I have added a new single sample line so that's not part of my view group so here in prospector there's my section view group and I've created an individual sample line that's separate I can now move that inside the section view group and automatically update the views you'll notice that cross section will disappear it's now been added into the view group um, and it's this one here so you can see that if you need to add sections after you've created your sheet layout it doesn't matter you can simply update the the view group and uh, it will sort out the arrangement order for you